On both sides of the country, both political extremes took their rage to the streets. Street fights in New York on Friday in Portland, Oregon last night pit far-right activists connected to a group called Proud Boys against the far left's loosely affiliated Antifa, short for anti-fascist. Showing once again how America's political conversation is forgetting to use its inside voices as political leaders on both sides ramp up harsh rhetoric. Former Obama Attorney General Eric Holder raised eyebrows at a Democratic campaign event in Georgia. When they go low, we go high. No, no. When they go low, we kick them. Later saying he was not advocating violence. Two days later, Scott Wagner, a Republican gubernatorial candidate in Pennsylvania, told his opponent, You better put a catcher's mask on your face because I'm going to stop all over your face with golf spikes because I'm going to win this. Some politicians, like New York Governor Andrew Cuomo, say the violent brawls show a trickle-down effect from the rhetoric. I hold the president responsible. When you start to demonize differences, when you fan the flames of racism and division, you can create a fire that is out of control. The Proud Boys say they're inspired by President Trump. I think the Proud Boys, and I think Donald Trump for the most part, draws people that have been disenfranchised by most of the public because they don't fit in. The Anti-Defamation League says violent political speech has given a sort of license to street-level violence. In part, that's because the ability for people to try to leverage the public discussion on the ground is what brings people out. Angry words that may translate into violent acts. Matt Bradley, NBC News. Hey, NBC News fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.